I can fix it. I can fix anything, even if I can't. That's what I tell myself and everyone else, as a matter of fact. Anyway, hi, I am Bill. I'm the maintenance guy here at Barnaby's. I used to be a fire marshal a few towns over, but I resigned shortly after investigating a fire that happened here years ago, two days before Christmas, but that's a never mind, you get the idea. I became totally obsessed with this place. I would purposely drive out of my way just to drive by here. On my days off, I would park my car in the parking lot of the bank across the street and just stare at the building for hours. I'd even dream about it at night. It was bizarre. Anyway, when I was growing up, I wanted to be a professional dance skater. You know, like the people you see in the old school rap videos from the 70s or on the street corners dancing on roller skates. Yeah, I wanted to do that for a living. But sometimes life has other plans. Now I just hang out at the local roller rink every weekend, Monday and Tuesday nights, as well as Friday nights. The music nowadays kind of sucks, but at least you can dance to it. Kind of. Anyway, let me tell you something. I decided to stop by the store one day for some band-aids, gauze, pads, and peroxide. Some say I'm accident prone, but I don't really see it. I talked to Pat, the owner, and he said he was looking for a maintenance guy. I thought, here's my opportunity. I'm fully trained in plumbing and electrical. Yeah, right. I have no idea what I'm doing. I just wing it most days. Don't tell Pat. Pat agreed to hire me on, and I resigned from the fire marshal position the same day. It's a lot less money, but there's something about this place. It's like I belong here. Now, as the maintenance guy, I'm responsible for making sure that all cooler cases, lighting units, roll-up doors, deli slicers, ovens, and fryers, among many other things, are all in working condition. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. What about the chicken fryer incident? That was not my fault. If that guy hadn't accidentally dropped his fountain drink full of ice into the fryer, when he was turning it off, that would not have happened. Melanie didn't tell you that in her story, did she? What was he doing with the fountain drink by the fryer in the first place? We're not allowed to eat or drink in prep areas. Anyway, I'm not supposed to mess with the heating units and the air conditioning systems or the ventilation systems because I'm not HVAC certified, but that doesn't stop me. I like to push a few buttons every now and then just to see what happens. Now, for those of you that don't know what HVAC stands for, now, for those of you that don't know what HVAC stands for, wait a minute. I don't even know what it stands for. Give me a minute. Let me look it up on my phone. Okay, I got it. It stands for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Apparently, you have to be trained to work on those things. Yeah, right. I ain't got time for all that. Anyway, let me tell you something. Barnaby's is a very old store. We don't have one of those nice, fancy, digital, temperature-controlled water heaters like the big-name stores do. No, we still have a boiler. That's right, a boiler in the basement. Yes, there's a basement. It's not a full-size basement, though. More like a 10 by 20 foot room below the store. The entrance to the basement is between both bathroom doors by the cash office in front of the store. Now, for those of you that don't know the difference between a water heater and a boiler, you're going to have to look it up for yourself. I got a story to tell. Now, the basement is off limits to the normal employees, but not me. I've never been normal, and I like it that way. But seriously, only Pat, myself, and the HVAC guys are allowed down there. Now, let me tell you something. The basement is creepy as hell. I love it. It's cold, dark, musty, noisy, and smells like decaying mouse and foot sweat. I told you I wasn't normal. Anyway, the walls are made of cinder blocks, the floor is made of exposed concrete, and the ceiling is made of metal with various sized water pipes running along it that leak on occasion. 
there's a boiler, all the compressors, fuse boxes, and fold-out cot down there. Why a fold-out cot, you ask? Well, you see, I live in the basement. It's really not that bad once you get used to the noise and the smell. I have electric and heat. There's a laundry tub with a working water faucet for when I need to wash up and a five-gallon bucket with a lid on it for when I have to use the bathroom late at night, when the store is closed and the alarms are on. I've got a microwave, a coffee pot, a CD player, and a portable DVD player. Plus, I live at a grocery store, so I've got all kind of food whenever I want, as long as I pay for it on payday. Anyway, it was about five years ago on a Tuesday at the end of August, around 2.30 p.m. I was down in the basement on break, crocheting a blanket for my mom. Don't laugh. Rosie Greer does needlepoint and he was the fiercest linebacker in the NFL at one time. You wouldn't laugh at him, would you? Anyway, I was crocheting the blanket and boogieing down to Time Life's greatest disco hits of the 70s. I love disco music. Casey and the Sunshine Band, the Bee Gees, Donna Summers, the Village People, just to name a few. Disco is going to make a comeback one day. Just wait and see. My favorite disco song ever is Disco Duck, by Rick Dees. I'm listening to it right now. Go ahead, look it up. It's on YouTube. Anyway, I was down in the basement getting down when suddenly I heard several loud bangs that sounded like metal slamming against concrete. I looked behind me and saw the boiler dancing across the floor. Holy jumping Jesus on the dance floor, I said. It's gonna blow. I throw the blanket and run up the stairs as fast as I could. I burst through the basement door onto the sales floor and screamed, The boiler is going to blow. Everybody run. People started screaming and running for their lives. Some lumberjack-looking guy came hopping out of the bathroom as he tried pulling up his pants. He had pink lacy women's underwear on with little hearts on them. Wow, you don't see that every day, I thought. Anyway, I knew the boiler was going to blow at any second, and the front door was blocked by people trying to leave. So I ran as fast as I could and did a safe at third slide to register eight, then crawled underneath to try and shield myself from the blast. I could see through a small crack in the metal. I watched as both bathrooms in the cash office exploded as the boiler erupted upwards from below, knocking out the power and sending the store into complete darkness. The security lights came on seconds later. They run off a generator out back. Anyway, scalding hot boiling water, bricks, pieces of toilets, sinks, urinals, and large chunks of metal and wood flew through the air, as well as the money in the cash office. The sound of car alarms and blood-curdling screams were heard soon after. Luckily, Candy, Catherine, and Pat were all on a coffee run at the time, so the office was empty. You see, we didn't have a safe at the time. We kept all the money locked up in a large wooden cabinet. Yeah, we got one now, though. Anyway, several people were hit by the explosion sending their severely burned, mutilated bodies and body parts through the air as well, landing on display shelves and the floor, the large pieces of wood and metal slamming down into their bodies, killing those that weren't already dead. As the scalding hot, boiling water poured down, several others begin to reach and dive for the fallen money. They begin to scream in pain as they fell victim to their greed. The water landing on their faces, hands, and clothing, their skin began to bubble and liquefy as they fell to the floor dead, their clothes melting to their bodies until there was nothing left but a mound of colored goo and blood on the floor. That vision will forever haunt me in my dreams. I can still hear their screams, even in the daytime. Now, let me tell you something. I've seen a lot of burn victims as a member of the fire department, but I have never seen anything like this before. 23 people died that day. Luckily, all the employees were accounted for. 
Anyway, as the water slowly diminished, I crawled out from under the register unharmed. I'm not going to lie. I grabbed a few handfuls of cash as I stood to check for any of the survivors. I used it to buy a new pair of roller skates and a couple of outfits like Tony Monero wore in my all-time favorite movie, Saturday Night Fever. You know, John Travolta's character. No? Oh, come on. Work with me here, people. Anyway, as I stood up, I saw about 20 people, including several employees, standing there, staring at the damage. I turned to my left and saw directly into the street. The whole left corner of the building was gone, and there was a huge gaping hole in the floor. Sunlight pouring in from outside. Through the opening I could see damaged cars, dead bodies, and body parts laying on the grass, the sidewalk, and the road. One guy's body was up in the tree with a toilet seat covering his face. That's a real crappy way to go, I thought. Anyway, dust and debris were everywhere. People were screaming and crying as the car alarms blared. I walked out of the front door, which was still intact, the explosion missing it by mere inches. Some customers walked out with me. Others went to tend on the injured in the store. Now, what I saw out in the street looked like a war zone. Cars turned over on their sides, windows blown out, large pieces of metal and wood, as well as what used to be toilets, sinks, and urinals embedded in the road, the sidewalk, and the landscape, some with body parts sticking out of them. The entire roof section of the store was hanging off on the side of the roof of the bank across the street. More bodies lay scattered all around, some alive and some dead. People were actually fighting, well, more like pushing and shoving each other to get the remaining money on the ground. It was devastating. Pat, Catherine, and Candy were just returning from their coffee run. I ran over to Pat and told him what happened. He just stood there in shock for a while. He finally snapped out of it, and we all went to help the injured. Pat started grabbing all the money he could off the ground as he made his way there. Someone somewhere must have called the police, as they showed up minutes later with the fire department, several ambulances, and the coroner. Reggie blocked off the street, the EMTs tended to the injured, as I and several members of the fire department went to check the structural stability of the building. Yeah, I know, normally I wouldn't be allowed to go inside a damaged building, since I'm not part of the fire department anymore, but they let me go for old time's sake. Anyway, once they decided that the building was safe, the coroner then removed all of the bodies and the body parts in the store and on the street and then left. The ambulances loaded up as many of the seriously injured people as they could, then left for the nearest hospital, then came back for the less injured. After we exchanged a few high fives and had some small talk, the fire department left as well. Reggie and his deputies took our statements and then left too. Pat and the rest of the employees, including myself, spent the next several hours cleaning up what was left of the store as best we could. Pat sent Catherine to get several huge tarps and rope from one of the storage units down the street to cover the hole in the building. Now, let me tell you something. It took four days for the town's cleanup crew to clear up all the debris, blood, and water, and damaged vehicles from the street. It took six months and almost a hundred thousand dollars to repair the damages to the store, the sidewalks, the road, and the landscape. Thanks to Barnaby's being a historical landmark, Pat didn't have to pay anything. The town took care of it all, but that's a diff- oh, you know. Bob from the hardware store came by the next day and built a security wall within the store so no one would fall in the hole so repair crews could work and the store could be open at the same time. Thanks, Bob. We had two porta potties out back to use restrooms. Produce, deli, and the meat room all washed their trays and pans at the funeral home next door. They were nice enough to let us use their cleaning facilities. Yuck. Anyway, 
Although Pat did decide to get a huge steel safe, you would think that he would have put in one of those fancy water heaters as well, but no. I want to keep this place as original as possible, he said. Now, I don't know where he found this thing, but you guessed it, he put in another boiler. So, here I sit, down in the basement with this creepy boiler lurking over my shoulder, listening to Disco, crocheting my mom another blanket, and telling you this story. Hey, uh, what time is it? Oh, Mama Mia in a short bus. I gotta get dressed. Where's my suit? Where's my skates? I gotta go, people. It's disco night at the roller rink. Time to get my boogie on. Later, Tater.